in October 2022, Varek will publish a preliminary assessment of the underlying assumptions of payments from large caps to ISPs. And in that paper, we assess whether the underlying assumptions uh, in this debate are substantiated or not. And as a first point, we made clear that the traffic is requested and thus caused by ISP's customers, and thus not caused by the caps. As a second point, uh, that we can often hear the underlying assumption that more traffic and increase in traffic translates into higher costs. And Barack, we consider that the debate about network investment, traffic volumes and cost drivers needs to be carefully analyzed. And we then clarified that first in fixed networks, access networks, these networks exhibit a very low traffic sensitivity, whereas mobile networks experience some degree of traffic sensitivity. Another aspect is that typically IP interconnection agreements are about increasing the cost of the, the capacity of the IP interconnection link. These costs of increasing the IP interconnection link are very low. And thirdly, we pointed out that the costs of network upgrades for handling increased traffic volumes are low compared to total network costs. As a third underlying assumption, we pointed out that both CAPS and ISPs are mutually interdependent because telcos often assume that they depend more on caps than vice versa and which would then translate into an asymmetry when bargaining and we as Barrick stated as I said that there is a mutual interdependence uh, between both sides the demand from ISPs customers for content drives demand for broadband access and similar, the availability of broadband access drives the demand for content. A fourth underlying assumption in this debate is that CAPS, um, the, the, that ISPs uh, assume that the CAPS were free riding on ISPs' infrastructures. Here, Barrack made clear that there is no evidence of free riding. Under competitive conditions, there is no room for free riding. And in 2017, but also in 2012, Barrack had referred to the competitive nature of IP interconnection markets. And a study from Vic Institute in 22 also confirmed these find findings. The costs for internet connectivity, they are typically covered. The ISP's customers pay for it. And with this, I would like to hand over back to Veronique. 